Okay, so this is the Ca Deerfield Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, December 12th meeting, and which I'm going to call to order at 5.04 p.m. And um, the agenda is to uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting, to discuss the requests of the, s the select board for the uh, town common study <coughs> and the highway department the highway department's requests and also the uh, school department's requests if we have time and if Ken arrives. So, the minutes I see I left a few things <coughs> off that, uh, that I have to correct that uh, John was here and also Ken was absent. But other than that. Okay. With those changes, I'm going to make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so. <clears throat> so then let's uh, uh, talk with Trevor about the RFP for the town common. And if I, if I understand correctly, the 40,000 is for, is for like a, a study? So, well, it's a little of both. So last year, um, your board was uh, gracious enough to allow us to, uh, we were looking for 95,000 last year, and I think the board had felt, um, and I, I think at the time we were merging two projects together, Complete Streets and the mm -hmm. Town Common project. And so we thought, okay, we're not going to spend, you know, it was 40 was, 10% of the 400,000 you could possibly get, so that would cover design. It's been a lot more difficult than we thought to get complete streets done around the common because of the ownership. And we've had a lot of meetings with, uh, not a lot, we've had several meetings with DOT, a lot of meetings with Ty and Bond. We've had a change in Ty and Bond. Their, their staff has changed a little bit. So what we've kind of come to determine is that I can't really do both projects together. And so we haven't spent any of the 40,000 that was earmarked really at town meeting for complete streets, um, w which we do have an eye of where that will go this coming year. Um, but I wanted to do a separate request this year strictly for the common. And um, Ty and Bond probably would do the, the design of that. Um, but we felt like to just slim this back a little bit more and, we were really hung up on where the crosswalks were going to go, right? We didn't want to get into doing pathways until we knew where the crosswalks were going to go. And really all I've been trying to do for many years is replace the crosswalks um, on the common itself, the pathways, and a couple of benches. And maybe move the monument, but that's still up in the air. May not even need to do that. We know that there's no access to the common from the, say, Leo's or Jerry's old place coming across. There's there's no way to get across that. And that's the main crosswalk if anything's going to get done there. So the crosswalk from like Leo's goes, it kind of dead ends on. On the common on the corner. No, and there's no place to get onto the common from there. I mean, you can walk onto the grass, obviously, but there's no pathway. Mm -hmm. There's no ADA compliant you know, place for a wheelchair to get onto the common there or across to anywhere else. So, and does there have to be a sidewalk around the common? No. No, it has a little bit of pavement. Because if you, if you like park next to the common there, then you can't really, you have to like walk in the road to get That's to the- That's the other thing. Yeah, we're not to supposed get to, to be the parking crosswalk. around the common. So I'll back up a little bit. Uh, DOT, we've, we've determined that DOT owns Sugarloaf Street, Park Street, and Conway Street. So they own kind of two thirds of that mm -hmm. common. And we, well, actually three quarters of the common, they own Park Street, Sugarloaf Street, all the way to the stop sign in front of the old Cumberlands. And so the only thing that the town owns is front of Cheslicks, the sidewalk there and, and the road. That's it. So we can't apply for any. We could apply, but we wouldn't get granted any money for complete streets on anything other than that little strip. So we'd like to use that 40000 working with Ty and Bond to fix to design uh, the crosswalk and the, the walkways in front of Cheslicks and down, the cross down, down to Leo Stable. To, to Leo Stable. Yep, go ahead. 
Leo's table from, from, from um, so we, we have a lot going on. We have Leary lot working on and we want access because we can't park, really not allowed to be parking on any state highway, which is Park Street, Sugarloaf Street. We really wanna design the Leary lot as a parking lot. We've got plans for a- What's, I'm sorry, what's the- The Leary lot is bet between Cheslick's and the bank. There's a spot that's kind of got a little bit of tar and then some tea, you know, some gravel. And who, who owns that? We, we the do. Town the town owns it. All the way out, <laughs> all the way to the back to, all the way down to the brewery. So um, it's a big chunk of land. Doing. And we'd like to develop that um, and work with Ty and Bond to create parking there. So if we do lose parking from the state around the common, then we'd have a place and then from that Leary lot to Leo's table, kind of develop that that walking path, that sidewalk, make it ADA compliant, um, and then you know eventually it'll go around to to Elm Street. But then from that corner where Leo's is across to the Common, that's really the only reasonable crosswalk to the Common. The other one that's halfway is not safe. Um, it's right between parked cars, and it's not ADA compliant. It just hits a curb. So we want to develop that area. And then I would like to ask for this 40 that you were gonna grant, again, it was gonna be a two year thing. I'd like to separate it from the complete street and just focus on design of the pathways on the common and uh, whatever the design is and if we can move into construction after that, use the same money, great. Maybe we'd have to ask later on next year for additional construction money, but at least that would cover the design we think from um, the Leary lot. We're, we're doing the, the um, Leary lot under the MVP program. Correct. So it There's is a lot of different moving parts. Yeah. So we're it's going to be pervious pavers, and 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 the main thing is to become ADA qualified. Um, and and we're putting in an electric charging station there under another grant. There's several different grants a lot of going grants into coming this. To just yeah. Kind of piece it all together. What all does. The state owned after Park Street. <clears throat> they so own this? They, yes, they own Conway Street. Yep. Um, um, I, I just got an email back because, uh, so we met with DOT a little while ago, <clears throat> beginning ago. of December, I guess, or no, November, no. beginning no. of November, yeah. the 9th or 8th of November, we met with DOT, our chief of police, uh, highway, um, <clears throat> a couple of select board members. Uh, we all went down to talk with them about different projects around town that affected us, and that was a major area. Um, also, just this week, um, Senator Joe Comerford and Natalie Blaze just met with them as well, and um, they asked us for input. We also hit a few things that we wanted to talk about. This was one of them, and we got some feedback from them that they would, the DOT would like us to write a, um, a letter of intent that we would like to take over, probably from like the old fire station Park Street, kind of that area right now. Um, and then once they do that, then they would put it in their timeline to build up all the infrastructure, all the drainage and stuff before we would ever accept any of the, anything from the town. They would have to bring everything up to code. And they, but they need a kind of a timeline for that. So the first timeline is for us to kind of request that we would like that property. And we have other plans of either slowing down traffic on Park Street or making Park Street part of the common. You know, there's, there's many different design options to well, that's what look at. I, that's what I was going to say. Call me crazy, but is there the Call potential since <laughs> since you've only got the one strip of North Main Street that the state might help you with, yep. if we could take over, for instance, Park Street and Pleasant Street yep. from the state, would they be willing to do something to help us with the common development? Conway Street, you mean? Yeah, Conway. Conway. I meant yes. Conway Street. Yes, yes. I think I was like, well, no, no, no. I think not Pleasant are, Street, Conway Street, they sorry. They have plans but, to implement stuff, and it kind of fits at certain times, but they will kind of, from, I think Diane will maybe add to this, they, they see what's happening, it's a request like that, and then they try to pair up different programs that they're working on to help us. You know, well, they have all. a TIF. They, they go, have their transportation bond bill, Yes. and so that has to go into the planning. And, and they were willing to insert it in a based on our meeting they're willing to insert it sooner than later but it still is like a two or three year lag yeah, it's going to take okay. some time so we right. thought in the, one sec in the the main thing i'm asking for today is money to do some paving uh, uh pa pavers or 
pathways on the common and, and design that pathway and the um, benches, knowing that two, three, five years from now, we may alter that pathway and add on another crosswalk or maybe Park Street enlarges and the common gets a little bigger or, you know, we'll change that down the road, but it's not, I don't want it like so permanent that we can't just, okay, let's add on a little bit here with paper, something that could be mobile and adjustable because we'll wait until 2035 before we can ever get but anything I wanna, done. But I wanna just wanna Please. emphasize that the project that we've identified for complete streets is is only in the part that we own and control right now. Right. It's just the part from that begins around the Leary lot and goes to the corner in front of Leo's table, so the corner of North Main and Elm. And then the common where Trevor's sent mentioning, you know, just some fluidity in the future design and expansion of the common, you know, we'll have the opportunity for that. But what we're talking about connecting to the common now with the complete streets project now is is just that area and we're not talking about changing that in the future. So Correct. it's just that if the other mm -hmm. side of the common changes or this or the Park Street yeah. side we're talking. Yeah. So I just want to emphasize we're not talking about putting a bunch of infrastructure in and then taking and then it out. It. No, I'm talking um, just we the pathway have the really looked at this very closely and what we can do, you know, straight away to try to get some funding right, you know, off the bat from the complete streets program. This is a very attainable project. It's in a very high uh, highly uh, utilized business district right across from an area like a common that's a very walkable area with a bus uh, you know a bus stop directly you know adjacent and all these areas so uh, it's a very doable uh, project it's not a huge expansive area and when Trevor is talking about walkways and, and pathways none of that has been determined the money that we have that you gave us last year that would be for this year's budget would be used for the design of that so that we could apply for the construction money with the um, complete streets money. And the design of just the, just the, the walkway and the crosswalk it that area, be, whatever yeah, complete streets common. is, it, it it'll be deemed whatever is complete we we allowed. determine what the complete streets looks like there. If it's a, it could have a bicycle, um, it could have some bicycle component. I'm not sure, maybe a bike, um, you know, a, a rack and maybe a, a walkway for bikes or something. So I don't want to just talk. I don't want to jump to what it's going to look like. We'd have to figure that out. But that's what we're asking for the project. I'm, I'm sorry, so, I'm getting I'm getting yeah. confused. Oh, <laughs> welcome. I've been on the committee four years and it's been ridiculous. It seems like. We're the the 40000 from last year, that was for the complete street. Yeah, that's, that's already, yes. that's what I'm yeah. discussing. And, that's and then be, he's talking And we about found that. And that's that we for can, the sidewalk in, like in front of Leo's and Chesley's. That's, all that can be, and a right. crosswalk too. But that seems very so, incomplete wait to me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. At all. <laughs> that's not what I understand. What well, last year's 40000 is is a continuing 40, appropriation 000. to be used for complete streets. Yeah. Well, this if you 40, look at the language, 40, it wasn't. I asked for 95, and you only felt uh, comfortable doing 40 and, and tying it to the complete streets. So that left us no money to do anything on the common. Right, I understand. So I'm looking to separate that out right. this year. Okay, yeah. so if, okay. We, if it's separated out, that last year's 40 well, is for the complete street. Correct. It's going to be, be a, Stay with that. a remaining appropriation. Absolutely, yeah. Way. we have And an actual will be and, used. And, um, this 40,000 is for design. And hopefully implementa implementation, if I can. For pretty much the west side for, of the for, common. For and really the, the whole, uh, everything in the common footprint itself, not the parking around it or anything, but just when you get onto there from the crosswalk from Leo's, a pathway that leads to the, to the, um, to the fountain and then that leads to the existing crosswalks that are there right now. And then that's why I said that pavers you can dig up and move pretty easily down the road so if we find that 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 we close down park street you know per se and we and that becomes common then we just we either add on a little pathway there or we adjust it so it's going to have to be um you know expandable changeable down the road is the 40 for design this, this design this and 40? if i can get implementation out of it i don't know how much the total total design would be. I'm guessing that you could do the design for a lot less than 40 grand. Mm -hmm. Do so, we have any idea what the cost is going to be at we all? Have I at, we have asked, and the only numbers I got from Ty and Bond was 95000 to do a lot of this last year. So, um, and that included, included design? Included design. Uh, it was all design work. And then, so now that if we're pairing and off harmony. the 40 for them, I'm just thinking 40 for the project. If it becomes 20, 
great, and we'll, we'll maybe implement the other 20 for starting the project. But that we wouldn't come back and say what we're doing with it, or maybe asking another 10 or whatever it might cost to, to do the work. How long of a process do you think it would be to, once you give intent to the state, for them to actually, I know that they don't work quickly, yeah. but for them to possibly turn over that? I'm thinking five years. Okay. I, four to five is, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. I, I think you can, if you keep bugging them, right. we can get on the under the five. Right. Between but it four takes and five. Time but to get into their but they have, plan. It, it certainly, they were very, they really wanted us to give the stuff. They want us to take everything. Yes. <laughs> so they were going to try to figure out a way to pay for it. But we were very, very clear that the sidewalks, everything had to be upgraded and in good condition before we took. Yeah. And I, I would just and say just spend, have the, all this money spent and then, well, I mean, because, you know, pavers, right, it's great, you put them down now, but what if the pavers are different in five years? I mean, the pavers mm -hmm. are, yeah. you Try know. to find something that's, you know, that's I, doable. Um, whether it's a paver or if, or if it's a um, impervious kind of layman, I'm not, it'd be worth looking at those options, knowing that we may end up expanding onto Park Street later or, adjusting over to I would like the Leary lot design to come in on that end and really change the way Park Street comes out to um, North Main Street and and just we expect there'll be a crossing closer to the Leary lot somewhere. Crossing. Yeah, the whole it's area is dangerous right now. It I mean, is it's, dangerous. It's, it's, it's very walking, dangerous. Drive but I don't know if any of this money is going to solve any of that. It may. Tr yeah, we're hoping well, that it might. Well, the crossing in front of Cheslicks right now is is um, you know there's a lot of parking on the side on the other side and there's a crosswalk between cars and things like mm -hmm. that and it's the accessibility on that corner as well. Now that whole business has been. Um, you know, there's more businesses Upgraded. in there yeah. now in that corner. Uh, just the crossing is not accessible whatsoever. So if anything, it may not be a, a large project. You know, it may not right. be a, 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 a like a street, a major, you know, four or five hundred thousand dollar project, but a couple hundred thousand dollars. But we definitely need to address the sidewalks, the accessibility mm -hmm. and the crossing in that section, uh, just because it's very heavily traversed um, mm -hmm. at all times of day mm -hmm. and night now. And it's extremely dangerous when there's truck traffic, truck trailer traffic in that small you know block um, so I do think it would be something that could be addressed pretty pretty um, straightforward we could Italy. continue this conversation I don't need to make any decisions tonight I'm happy to come back and spend more time I've got to run over to another meeting so just okay. pass on this well, we'll I, talk well, later on you don't have to make I any think decisions. you clarified for me what it what the request is for Okay. I'm, I'm, Has any of the 40000 from last year been spent? No, nothing okay. has been spent yet. Still yeah. still sitting there. But we're hoping to have that yes. spent yeah. in the spring. Yes, we'll be meeting with Brian Bond yeah. to try and get exactly. that nailed down now. So yeah. just to update on that, so we have a Tier 2 prioritization planning process mm -hmm. in place that we did get funded from DOT. So that's what we're working on, and that's how we've identified these plans or these um, projects. And that is the top project on the, the list. There's The three top projects are all around the common, basically, mm -hmm. that whole intersection and area, how the movement is right. going right now um, so that is one of the top projects so now the in in January we'll button up the prioritization plan and that will be turned into DOT and once that gets approved by um, DOT then we can apply for the construction money so then that 40,000 um, the idea is to put that project together um, the design fairly quickly so we'll be in ready to apply for the implementation money and in this time bond indicate that they intend intend to charge us forty thousand dollars to put that plan together oh no not at all no we haven't okay. gotten any we haven't gotten that far we're just um like i said we just have identified the project when we get the prioritization um plan it actually has a list it has estimates on it that's required as part of the plan so mm -hmm. there'll be estimates that will show right. you what the construction costs are estimated to be for those projects yep. and that will be that will help you determine what the design costs might be i mean from my perspective i don't I can see where we might approve $80,000 total towards design and project costs just to present it to the townspeople because if we go in and say we approved 40000 for design last year and we're approving another 40000 for design this year and we go out and spend twenty five to 30000 on design and we've got $50,000 left out of appropriations, we have to go back and say, you know, now we want to write another article that says change that 50000 to actual construction costs and add another X amount of dollars for construction. Mm -hmm. it, it just seems kind of 
what I'd say is disingenuous or not totally transparent. I don't know if we if we could get hard harder numbers from Tig and Bond so that we're. I don't see it that way. What's I that? see it as two separate things. Well, I, I mean, you see it as two separate things. If if we go in, we approved forty thousand last year for the, you know, the streets. Complete streets. Clean, yeah, the streets projects, and they charge us twenty five thousand dollars to do that. Now you've got fifteen thousand dollars left over that you have to have a town meeting vote on to change the designation for what's going to happen with that money. It would stay with, it would, could stay with complete streets for yes. the construction. Yes, but it's but it voted could also as design stay with cost. Them. It's not voted as construction. It, it could also just okay. you got to just design. word the articles properly. That's that's the I'm sorry. Oh, well, we could also leave it. I mean, so we have the opportunity to apply for con complete streets construction funding two times a year every year, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying you'll get funded every time, but you could leave the money in complete streets design right where it is, and then if you don't use it at the end of next fiscal year, you could just, you know, turn it back into, you know, the free cash. But there may be an opportunity to apply for, if we apply for, like, a small project in eight, this coming April, and then in the fall we wanted to apply for another small project, we, if we had design money and could get it designed, we could apply for construction at that juncture mm -hmm. as well. There's no limit on, you know, the application as long as you have the project ready to be to be okay. constructed, we could turn the corner and go up Elm Street. Yep, fine. It could I, be I, another I, small I just, project. I mean, if, we, it can be John building and, sidewalk. John and I are. I mean, if we're sitting at this table and we're confused about which forty thousand is which, or the, you know, I'm sitting here thinking this might just be. I think it was more confusing before because it was combined. I think splitting it apart is is mm -hmm. better. Actually. Okay. I mean, I. Yep. It makes so. it more. People understand better what we're trying to do. There's the complete streets program that we're trying to get going, and we've been trying to get going for years. And then there's the common that needs more work, and and the, our sidewalks that need to line up and be accessible. Mm -hmm. I guess we need Trevor here. Maybe you know um, the if we decide that we want to change the walkways on the common three years from now to get to com so it coincides with complete streets what we do there um, and we say that the walkways are what's the word impervious Imper they can be easily moved Impervious. <laughs> Um, can that be done by our people, our highway department, or are we going to have to go to a contractor to do it? I think the intention was that they would be pavers that could be moved by our, you know, by, by people That's that could just but dig them know? up and move Before them. Before we yes. spend the money, yeah. I would know? say yeah. I would say yes, John, because what we're going to do is just lay them down. In other words, you're just going to clear the path and lay those, the pavers down. You are actually not going to put impervious pavers in. And the reason why is to make impervious pavers work, you have to do a whole underground drainage mm -hmm. thing. And because yeah, this is, point. we're not sure what the design is, we wouldn't put that much investment into the um, initial, you know, uh, walkways until we have a more idea what the permanent okay. design is. Because you just, I mean, it's just too much money. That's, that's why we're doing the impervious are the pervious pavers and the Leary lot under the MVP program because you, it's not just, you know, you lay down the pavers. You have to actually do an underground, um, you have to prepare the soil and then do a drainage system underneath. But then the, you put the pavers down. But the pervious ones, it has to be some kind of base. You can't right. just throw them on the lawn. No, but. No, you, got, you have to excavate yeah. X number of inches and then you put a layer of uh, stone dust, stone or, dust or, yeah. or yeah. Yeah. Stone, right. and that's, yeah. gravel yeah. And, yeah. that's that's to yeah. moving that kind of stuff is totally different than putting in the right. And I'm talking pavers. about the pervious ones, the one of the movable. Is that something that we can do ourselves? I, I, I it I depends. Just, I, it depends if we get a grant when, when we finally do the um, complete streets. Um, and we have ownership of Park Street. Depending on what we just do with Park Street, we might change the whole design, and then we would encompass that um, under the grant. But, I mean, we could do it ourselves, because it's just laying down pavers. 
and then picking them up and moving them if we have to. But if there's a possibility of getting it done under a grant and you're putting down pervious pavers, then we would, you wouldn't be doing using your town crew. I, I don't think it's something the town crew would be. You need to ha hire somebody that knows what they're doing. I mean, if it's done, excuse me, half-ass, it's, it's going to be worse than not doing anything. Yeah. It, it has so, to be done right from the beginning. So, so we're going to spend... You're going to spend a lot quite of money, a bit of money to, to, to a quite yeah. a bit of money yeah. to put down walkways, and I if the the common needs it. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but we're going to spend quite a bit of money to put down walkways that may have to be changed later mm -hmm. with, at quite a bit of money. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I just you can't just lay them down. Just, they need, it needs to be done right. Yeah, I want to just so to comment on that. So the, I think the idea of getting the money, we do need to have a design for the common that connects the walkways to the crosswalk. So it's kind of a, what comes first, like you're saying. Um, but I don't think the intention when we built this, the idea I know when the common committee has been discussing it is that they wanted to focus on, you know, the area where the benches are now and on the side of the common that faces Cheslicks and where those walkways connect. And right now we know, we've identified that we need to address that crosswalk in the center of that block and move it maybe to the end and then make that an accessible crossing. So it's possible, I mean, I it maybe it's possible that we just create those end crossings and don't, you know, you know that, what I mean? That, like that something I, like that. that but I think sense. it would make yeah. more sense to, and we have a ways to go, John. Before you know, we we have to identify a part of the part of the idea is getting some of this money is to start identifying where we're going to put those components and those things. And if we can't start doing that, planning that, then it's hard to get further on actually doing anything. So no, that's why Trevor's about this asking. 40, that it, how, it, I am how too. Is this be used? I am too. I don't. I think what Trevor's asking for is forty. We don't think it's going to take forty to design the common, but there is infrastructure there that does need to be designed. There's the fountain. There's some underground infrastructure. There's the walkways, and there's the connectivity to you know the exterior of it. So that has to be designed. It's not likely going to take forty. Um, so that's why he's saying if there's additional money, they'd love to start working on some of that infrastructure. But they're they recognize they don't want to put things in. They're just going to have to take out. So, I understand the dilemma. Part of it is just we need to be compliant and trying to, if you were in a wheelchair, you just can't get along. You, there's no way you can cross the street. Right. No. I've and that's, that's terrible. I guess from my perspective, I, I, I could go along with spending the money to fix the sidewalk in front of Cheslick's and Wheels Table. Mm -hmm and removing that existing crosswalk that's mm -hmm. in the middle and putting a new crosswalk that's ADA compliant on the corner of Elm Street and North Main mm -hmm. and maybe a walkway through the town common to the existing walkways and then stop right there right. until right. we see what exactly. goes on. But I wouldn't want to do anything else more on the common. That's my feeling. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that's all you're ever going to get for that money anyway. Well, I, I think it might be able to design further, but you, why would, you would not want to build further until, you know, the end, the, the second half of the common is the back side, and mm -hmm. that's what you're basically saying. Well, there's a lot of work. I don't know. That's not what this, what this request is talking. It's talking about replacing current benches and the walkways will change. Yep. My, my yes, hope is to be much more limited than that. Yep. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, make it accessible and and stop. I think and we can go back to the common committee. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with the Cumberland Farms. I mean, I, it, there's just so many. I agree. We haven't talked about that connection either, exactly that, how it will go that way or how it will go that way. So I agree. I think yeah. that we would only want to talk about that front section. So I think that's, that's reasonable, and we can go back to the common committee and talk about that. Jeff, you can have my chair. I have to... Uh, Go to another meeting. Did you have any more questions on that, maybe? John? No, I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Did anyone have <clears throat> any more questions before I leave? None on that one, no. Okay. Which one was being discussed? We discussed town the uh, town common design. Yeah.
and we were clarifying that this 40,000 is, di is a s different, separate 40,000 from the 40 complete streets, 40,000 from last year. So. Well, we went, we, we met with DOT and we clarified the ownership. And so it just, it made sense to, to separate the complete streets and the town common projects because we weren't going to be able to do what we needed to do um, because we didn't own. We owned a lot less than we thought. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. The biggest thing is just making sure that whatever's done on the town common will be coordinated with the streetscape. Yes. As far as design goes. Yep. And the um, and we're also trying to um, make sure it we coordinate with the MVP program. Right. The MVP program is going to do the pervious pavers in the Leary lot. May I on on the pavers? I, I do have some concerns because I'm familiar with pavers. Yep. There is quite a bit of maintenance with pavers, and they do get slippery uh, when wet or in the winter time, and it's very difficult to get pavers completely clear of snow and ice. And with pavers, you also have to be a little careful with uh, the sanding of pavers. Yes, you do. So. Uh, that is a concern and then with with pavers you also are going to have some movement no matter who does it mm -hmm. you're going to have some movement so you've got to be aware of that it's not going to stay smooth and level throughout and you're also going to have weeds growing up through even though they use uh, special sand in between those pavers to mold them so there there's a lot of maintenance with pavers and I'd just be a little cautious with them. I just notice, and I've seen it done before, and it works fairly well. They use a concrete, which is uh, which has a polymer mix and fiber mix with it, and they stamp it. So you can do colored and so on and so forth. So it looks like papers. So it looks but like it's papers. actually solid. Exactly, concrete. but it's solid, yeah. and you don't have all those other issues because within that concrete, you can actually you, build in a, a sanding. Are you talking about the same pavers like they do in New Hampshire, like in Portland, the city of Portland? Yeah, even, even right, even in New Hampshire, yes. wherever the case may be, okay. the, you're uh, going to have... The, those are the ones that I went and did a site visit to, and they are were those? really impressive. And they right. Had, oh, they look beautiful, don't get me well, wrong. But they're not, well, like you're saying, for instance... they a really good track record with snow and ice. Right. Well, I'd be a little careful because I'm living with pavers. I, I know pavers. Oh, yeah, yeah, but that's the old technology. This is new technology. This is really good. You know, the new technology has really been good. They've yeah. upgraded. But it is maintenance. Like, like the railroad, I don't know if the railroad paid for the ones over by right. in front of Leader, but the weeds are, you know. So I would yeah. just, I, I it's a mess. Right. We're, all all, all we're, I'm we're, saying is. Yeah, we're, right. we're going to have a whole, we're going to have a class and a whole demonstration right. of Well, I would just, uh, hopefully you don't yeah. rule, you know, you take a look at a few options. That's all I'm saying with, the, with that comment. This would be under the MVP grant, and we have a design firm out of, um, uh, you know, to the eastern part of the state that is like, they're the ones that did a lot of the infrastructure in Portland, mm -hmm. and they really are excellent. Yeah, no, I've been to Portland. I, I'm yeah. familiar with it, so, but I'm just, I just want to give a word of, a word their, of caution. Yes. Oh, I, absolutely. That you may want to you may want to look at a couple options there yeah. before you jump in both feet. Uh, yeah, no, we we're definitely um, we're going to go since it's going to be covered by the grant. We're going under the high high end good good mm -hmm. uh, system. I okay, that's, that's what we're going to try to do for Frontier as well. Yeah, you know their parking lot, and that will take care of the stormwater. It will relieve a lot of the stormwater going off into the Bloody Brook. Well, just food for thought, that's all. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Well, they have a pervious blacktop. That, you know, like 91. I mean, that, mm. I'm just sort of the pavers, like, over by a liter, like I was saying. I mean, mm. you know, the weeds grow up in a year and it looks like crap. And you so, see that well, everywhere. There's maintenance. There's exactly. a lot of maintenance, yeah. There's a lot of maintenance still, so. Okay. Okay, so I guess moving along to the school department requests. 
Nope. Do we have enough to where we can, um, is everybody happy? They have enough in their heads so that when it comes time to our final meeting, we decide whether we're gonna vote for it or not? Or well, we might have to discuss it at another meeting probably, right? That's my question, yeah. yeah. So we're not done with this yet. I don't think we're done with it. Okay. I'm not done with it, no. Sorry, dear. Oh, it's okay. Okay, so, so the school department requests are, most of them are continuations. Continuations. Yes. The only, the, the entryway repairs would be there. Yeah. The, and the generator. So the flooring there. upgrades and the restrooms, we've talked about those before. Those are part of the. Correct. The ongoing. Mm -hmm. Planned upgrades. And then the two other requests, one is, is uh, repairing the courtyard and the other mm -hmm. is a generator. Yes. So, um, so the, if you, if you wanted a little bit of explanation, the, sure. the front courtyard has now, I don't know how many times it's been cut open and paved back over and it's patchwork and it's, um, well, it's closing in on 30 years old. Uh, it's a, it's all blacktop paving. At this point in time, the school is putting this in as a placeholder, $50,000. There is a, an application in for a grant for design work on an improved entry, not an improved entryway, but a new entryway. Is, the grant's been put in place for Frontier <laughs> and for the Deerfield Elementary School. So they're trying, we're trying to get money to redesign the front entry courtyard into the elementary school, hopefully being able to incorporate some green designs and teaching designs within that um, new landscaping. Uh, but the front entryway at this point in time is getting to a point where it's becoming a little hazardous with, between the repairs that have been made and patches that have been put in place. The, um, the unevenness, the curbs are uh, becoming compromised. The curbs are all very high as well in many places and there's usually a gap, oftentimes a gap between the curbs and the blacktop. So something is going to need to be done in the fairly near term. So this money is in there um, to say that's about probably what it would cost to repave in its, in its present format. But there is a grant application in place to perhaps change the design and maybe able, we may be getting some money towards the cost of whatever work gets done. So. So this is actually an FY22 uh, request for monies per se, but you want us to I th that depend on grant. What does the 50,000 say? It does say FY22. Well, that would be right. the timing of the cost, but, right? But, right. Yeah. But, you, but you're just giving us a heads up for uh, They're giving at a, this time. A, a heads up, yes. Right. It, it appears like they're trying to uh, get a grant the MVP grant, and that would probably have an effect on their actual dollar cost down the road here. And also on the timing. And the timing, right. And so I think it looks like, to me, as far as the request goes, that they would actually be looking for the 50,000, uh, 50, excuse me, in FY22. Mm -hmm. So this FY21 so, is just this. So the 50,000 is for actual construction. It's not for the, this the was, design. This was, the design should come from the grant. If I, that's the intent. <clears throat> that, that's my understanding, yes. Yeah, okay. And then the, so the 50,000 is for actually building the. Can I, can I? Yeah, I think sorry. what they're trying to do is give us a heads up I to make sure we have it on the plan. I think I could maybe add to yes. it just because mm -hmm. I know about the MVP stuff. So, so I think what it, it seems what may be happening is we have a current application in to fund some of the design of the green, of the rain gardens and the boxes. And then the elementary school already had in their, in sort of their plan to do the repaving. Mm -hmm. And so now that we've put in the grant, we're hoping to do a more green sort of renewal of this area if the grant is awarded 
and um, and it would be through the grant, but this money could still be needed if you don't get the grant, plus you may you may need additional money. Like the grant's only paying for some right. of that part. I don't know if you're saying you might need additional right. money in that following year to do more of mm -hmm. the stuff, right. I think. Well, that's, that's it's only going to pay for the. This was they weren't looking for the 50000 for FY21, right. but yet right. they want to make us aware mm -hmm. that right. they would probably be looking for additional right. money up to $50,000 right. for FY22 to finish that right. off. But Ken, I guess the question is, do you think that if the grant doesn't get funded, do you need to address it in 21 though? Can you wait to 22? I, I don't, I. <laughs> Cause you just said it was really dangerous and it's got a bunch of cracks in it and all well, this stuff, so. It's getting to the point where it's, it's got hazardous you know, features to it. Right, right, that's what I'm definitely. saying. It's that's like, why it keeps coming up yeah. in our committee. Right. Um, and I haven't had a chance to sit down since I just returned at the end of last Sorry. week <laughs> to get the full story. But this was my understanding based on Wednesday night's meeting that we had. Uh, <clears throat> so I can get that answer, though. I'll pursue it further with Darius and Tina. I don't see why we can't set this aside and right. have Ken Goes give at this point additional in time. information. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So what exactly does green <clears throat> What is a green? So I, I want to clarify. Green uh, paving. So green. So that's your. That's what we're talking about. The pervious pavers. We're back to this pervious paver. So what? What I think Jeff is talking about is something a little bit different. The stamping is more of an aesthetic thing. I think. I don't think those are pervious. So no. we're talking about green infrastructure in terms of stormwater management and climate resiliency, and we're building that infrastructure through our MVP program, our Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. So it isn't, so the stamping and, the, and those kind of pavers, those are hard surface, and I'm not sure they have any, um, I'm not sure about e, that. Right, so even, that's even why with those, I just they're make, easier to maintain. Right, I just but. want to make clear that there's going to be maintenance on, on the pavers. Yes, yes. And somebody's going to have to make a commitment to do that maintenance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, they look beautiful when you put them down. But if you don't do the maintenance in a short period of time, you start to have right. issues. That's exactly right. And it's the same correct. thing with a green, That's uh, a, a rain garden yeah. approach to drainage. Yes, um, the it's green, a The green approach to a front entryway drainage or any kind of drainage is uh, increasingly, and, and particularly around schools, that you will you'll design the drainage off of the impervious surfaces and alongside the impervious surfaces to be things like natural rock courseways mm -hmm. and other things that might flow into a final drainage structure as opposed to having numerous catch basins. Mm -hmm. And within that, within those drainage designs, you actually have a teaching environment where kids can go and see what happens with water and how it helps promote growth of certain species and mm -hmm. all kinds of fun things can be done with it. The most recent example I've seen is down on a new building at UMass by the Fine Arts Center, uh, the big new brick glass fronted building that's across the street from the Fine Arts Center. If you go and walk by that, it's all rain gardens around the outside of it. It's, but it's also something that requires maintenance and care. So, yeah. um, but preferable to the quarter acre of asphalt that we have right now that leads into the, the elementary school, if we could scale that back a little bit. Right, right. Realizing, of course, that you're handling 400 right. kids all at once, twice a day. And, and look, um, asphalt requires maintenance, too. It really does. I mean, it's not, it's, you know, this stuff does in a different way, but I think what Ken said is really important. It does create a learning environment for the students. So at the elementary and the, and the regional school is where we've sort of identified places. We talked about putting them downtown, and because you also want them to be visible for your community as well, but we're going to be more cautious cautious about putting them, you know, obviously in the center, and then we do need to have a discussion about the maintenance of them and what that is going to have an impact on for public works. So I, you know, the maintenance, and I'm not opposed to the green or anything of that nature, or the pavers or whatever, I'm just saying that we've got to be very aware of the maintenance component, mm -hmm. because if you're not, and even if you let it go for a year, Absolutely. what was once beautiful when you installed it, right. Within a year's period of time, right. it gets pretty ugly right. pretty fast. And it's, I just, I want to make sure that if we're going to do something like this, 
that there is a commitment to a maintenance schedule in a maintenance budget so right. people can plan on that and going to be aware that it's going to be time consuming there's going to be a cost there to maintain it that's, that's right. all that's it right. probably ought to be right. the maintenance of them probably should be a line item in their operating budget and then yes. we can see it yes what it's going yes. to cost. Yeah. So, so next week, I don't know if you'll all be able to attend the, the meeting with the three boards, but on the agenda, I do have, you know, I started drafting, you know, in alignment with these, with these ideas that, you know, with public works to have some discussion about the operations and equipment, equipment upgrades or things that may be necessary if we want to talk about building this infrastructure. We're talking about adding components at the transfer station, including composting, and we have recycling there. We're adding, we're talking about adding solar. Um, we're doing complete streets and green streets, and we're talking about doing street lights and, and electric chargers and upgrading the parking lot, and we're talking about doing those things at Frontier and Deerfield Elementary. We're talking about upgrading our town buildings. We're doing an assessment right now. Um, we're talking about culverts and our wastewater treatment facilities. So that's a lot of public works, um, you know, infrastructure to be talking about. And some of those things um, would require a different level of maintenance, um, both with equipment and human resources. So I think we should at least look at that and then make some decisions about what you, how you do want to proceed. Well, I think we have to determine what would be cost effective also. Uh, you, you may find in some situations that you'd be better off subbing it out and, and putting it out to bid and having a contractor come in and do it. Uh, but obviously that's something that needs to be discussed as far as how you're going to proceed with that, whether it's something that you know we can do in town or something that really needs to be out to bid and let a contractor come in Right. do it and be done with it but I want you to know that you you know you have illuminated the fact that we need to consider the maintenance and equipment and things so we you mm -hmm. know we do mm -hmm. want to do that we want to yeah, consider. very very important okay so then the, the last thing is the proposed generator for yes. the Deerfield <laughs> Elementary School so if I could could uh, just try to address that for you that is there and the, the school committee is submitting it as this is the cost that we've gotten. We, we had $24,000 set aside four or five years ago to study a generator. Nothing was ever done with it. And they came to the committee in the fall, or they came to me in the fall and said, what do you want to do with this? Just give it back to the town or should we do something? And we, we agreed as a committee that we'd spend some of the $24,000 to find out a, what needs to be done with the school building now to make it generator ready, and B, you know, what would be the approximate cost of the generator. So I think there was a, a determination that, um, well, the, the, the work that would need to be done has been identified, and I can't remember if we agreed to go ahead and proceed with it since we had the money. Um, but the $68,000 we're submitting to this committee and to the select board as this is what it would cost to put a generator onto the Deerfield Elementary School. Now the decision needs to be made. Do we want to generate that building? Do we not want to generate the building? Do you want to have, I mean, I know we just put a generator in here that allows this building to serve as a sort of a, or we're about to put a generator in here. I'd like to speak to that. <laughs> What's that? I'd like to speak to this. Well, this, well and I, but, my, my question is the town hall generator was, 33,000. Right. Yeah, it's 30 something. So, right. so yeah. why is the well, school's a lot bigger? But school's bigger. Bigger. School's school's bigger, bigger size, or? and we're we're powering a Freezers. few more things. We're powering uh, okay. food service operations and a larger physical plant. Um, and is some of the 68,000 to prepare the building to prepare prepare? My the, understanding is the this electrical is the, the the electrical. I system don't know too. if it's the full. <laughs> Full sure. project costs. Again, I've missed the meetings on either side. I think side this to is the it. actual generator. I think it's just the this generator. Is the generator. I think those costs had they had already done some pre preparatory work, but right. 
But I guess, you know, since this was conceived a few years ago, we have added a generator to this building. We've signed a regional um, sheltering agreement to have that be at Frontier. So we are prepared to do sheltering operations yeah. at Frontier. So this is, I talked to Kevin about this because I think this is a expensive, redundant, um, you know, operation. If you want to have it, you know, you can. But, um, but it is really a lot to protect the building from freezing. Is what Kevin sort of indicated. So I don't know if there is another way to do that. But in terms of using it for sheltering, it's probably not. You know, we wouldn't necessarily be asking for a generator. I would think for that per se. But if well, there's another reason to keep the building generated, then well, there's there is you know. the you know the. <laughs> The concept of being able to keep heat in the building and keep it from freezing if right. you have a prolonged power outage in the whole area, right. uh, which it's been quite a while since we've had one that long, um, it is one question. You could always outfit the building for a plug-in, plug-and-play generator, a portable generator, and contract with Just someone. To keep your heat going. What's that? Just to keep your heat going. Just to have yeah. that yeah. capability, we could, you could certainly set the building up that way. Um, my concern has always been you've got, you know, thousands of dollars worth of food sitting in freezers mm -hmm. and you've, in the wintertime, you've got a building that can freeze if, if there's a prolonged outage. So those would be the two things. Now, could we find other places to free, take the frozen goods in the event of a, a prolonged power outage? I'm sure that we have neighbors within the, uh, the Deerfield community. Um, that could probably accommodate the amount of food that we have in storage in the, in the Deerfield Elementary School. Um, in fact, so, uh, I mean, those well, are all good questions. Maybe you could have questions. a smaller this generator that would just, just power the furnaces or the boilers and the refrigerators? Well, I, I, am, I am aware that Western Mass, or uh, uh, Eversource now, excuse me, has access and has used, there's a company right out of uh, Springfield, I believe it is, that uh, have mobile generators, and I mean huge mobile generators. So mm -hmm. if we, that you can rent by, by the day or whatever the case may be. Right. And Indeed. so if, as you yes. were saying, Ken, if there's a way of looking at the building and seeing if there was a way to do that, uh, as far as getting it ready to have you know, one of those generators right. show up on site if it was well, yeah, going to be a You install the transfer switches, and then you have like a plug on oh, the yeah, outside exactly. of the building, and right. you plug in. The, the yeah. one word of caution is if we're ever in an, in an event that would require us to generate that building because of, you know, concerns about prolonged um, lack of power, it's most likely going to be impacting a large area. Right. And you may not be in generators competition available for the generators right. unless right. you right. have a a contract already in place and you have a regular agreement with a company that mm -hmm. provides them so it's a you know it's almost right. like you've got a generator on retainer just just to be safe um, that that's the one thing about a, a, a quote backup generator scenario right so well, your food though would also be insured though the food, food most likely is insured yes um, but again I, I think that we've got generated capacity or you know people with freezer capacities in town that have generators powering their, their refrigeration equipment that would probably help us in a pinch. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd be surprised if they wouldn't. Because um, yeah. it's not that large of an inventory in there. Right. It, it's a good size inventory, but we could probably find a way. And if how it much happens, is, how much way, is it? you just put it out. In the how much is it? 100,000, 10,000, 2,000? The inventory. Oh, no, it's not hundreds of thousands. It's thousands. Thousands? Yeah, it's not tens of thousands. It's thousands. So we're going to... Okay. Yeah. So, again, this is, an, this is a number. We had money to do a study. or You know, we had money that had been set aside. We've spent some of that money to do a study and get an update. Give us a number that we could provide here. And I, 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 I thought we had agreed to proceed with some of the changes within the circuitry of the building. Um, to, uh, to make it ready to, to, let's say, upgrade the original transfer switch, because that the original transfer switch capabilities did not power very much in the building. So. What if we, this is kind of thinking outside the box, what if we had a mobile generator for the town? 
Okay, okay, let's run it at the school for a while. Okay, the school's warm. The freezers are done. Take it over to the town hall. Run it at the yeah. town hall for a while. Well, the town hall now has a generator. Yeah. Right. No, well, okay. Well, so but, uh, no, the I'm new building saying, that we don't know and about. And did we, did we upgrade there, I mean, the, the, uh, the sewage treatment? Well, we are, we are get there is a new generator at the sewage treatment. So right. instead there's of buying a generator a proposed, for, what's that? Ge there's a new part of the sewage treatment upgrade is, is a new is generator. generator. Right, is a generator. Yeah. And instead is of getting a generator for every building, remember. why don't we get a generator? Is there a generator, right. generator at all of the yeah. yeah. Wastewater treatment. If they do that. I can't remember. I can't remember. As long as the building was <laughs> set up for it, there is yeah. You would think there would be, but you would think I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean. Again, this was submitted for, the, for the, the various boards to consider. The school wants to say, we've done what we had set out to do five years ago. We finally did it this year. Uh, we've done the studies. This is what it would cost to put a generator on. If, if both boards decide not to ca carry it forward, that's fine. I know that the, I knew that we are, we are aware that the agreement exists with Frontier, but I believe that's for a regional shelter it's not just Deerfield right correct, correct. yeah correct. I think it's a it's a regional um, sheltering agreement right so, so who determines if we need more emergency shelter space who makes that determination oh probably like the emergency management director in conjunction with public safety and and the region if we had so in other words if they, they were at capacity for the region you mean mm -hmm. in, at yeah well, I think that determination yeah. should be made yeah. yeah you know well yes we are going to use a school Right. As an emergency shelter, or no, we're not. I mean, if that, you know. Oh yeah, yeah there's. I think that point. determination should be made before we. You mean decide on the so is the frontier yes. agreement yeah. sufficient the frontier. to meet the sheltering right. needs well, of I the town community? Would then of this Deerfield. building though be the overflow for that because of the because there there are a lot of the thing about schools with with sheltering and you bring people into them they are very restrictive you have to have certain you know, things in place. So this, they've gone through, like the COG, when they did the regional sheltering agreements, you know, worked quite closely with the schools and they have an agreement that all the towns have basically signed off on. Um, so, you know, you'd have to look and I don't know if you have your, your elementary school designated as a shelter now, but I just no, assumed I that I this building would be the overflow, you know, for, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, not sure if we have something designated as the yeah, center. I don't know how much, if this is being a command center and everything else, I don't know how much. Is this the EOC too? Or is that, so usually that, I thought that was South Deerfield Fire District was the EOC. I don't center. know. Oh, I thought they were the South EOC. South Deerfield Fire is a component piece, but um, part of the justification for doing this building was to right. have the an police. emergency. Oh, it will yeah, also be right. the, you know, well the emergency the operations be right. center. Be up and running oh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at the SEMP plan closely. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not I totally think it was just speed. the generator here was just to make sure that the police department was had right. had heat and power. Oh. Well, now it's and, the whole building. And now it's, it's like, the whole building. And right. if you were going to do the, just the police department, you might as well do the whole I building. I guess. Yeah, so. yeah. So mm -hmm. now it's all. But before yeah. it was just Absolutely. we had a little, and now it's like everything. Now it's like. Yeah, <laughs> because this, the citizens, if there's a real emergency, would likely, it makes yeah. sense, they would come to the town hall Absolutely, and the yeah. police department yep. for, yeah. so. Well, we could have this be a warming, a warming center. We've right. talked about doing that or a cooling center as well. So that would be a good, yeah. I think Skip's got a good point. We ought to determine what we need for emergency shelter. We have two. We have here in the high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do we, we need Do more? we need another? Or we not? don't need yeah. more than we don't need. Did for this the generator yeah yeah we can look in the sun hopefully, plan and see if your shelters are identified uh, would there be um i'm just thinking would there be insurance savings if you had a generator so the insurance company wouldn't have to worry about the building freezing or the i, I would imagine yeah i mean i would imagine any insurance savings we'd find would take a while to provide us a payback on yeah. the sixty-eight thousand. but i don't know I mean, it's just a guess Probably trying to true. think if I had any gains in, <clears throat> on my campus when I put, finally started putting generators in. I didn't see a significant mm -hmm. reduction in insurance rates. <clears throat> so, but buildings with sprinklers, <laughs> That's for sure. it's a good idea to keep yeah. them warm no matter how short yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, the duration true. is on a power outage. <laughs> You'll pay for a generator pretty quickly with 
versus sprinkler That's lines. That's for sure. That's yeah, for sure. no, I. You can see both sides of it. There's no. Yeah. Well, you can probably do it for let a me, lot less than this. Yeah, can do let me do it. Running right. your heating system. So what I'll try and do is get a few you more a answers of out of Darius that. and the uh, Darius and Shelley and the team, okay. the facilities team, and come back with a little bit more input. See if I can also get a, a clearer definition from them of what the frontier agreement entails. Can you find out, Diana, about? The needs for emergency shelters? Sure, I'll look at the sump, uh, sump plan and see what you've identified as your shelters. I feel like there's also some maybe um, toward Old Deerfield because you want to be, uh, or somewhere like on the other side of a river. You know, you usually want to have one on one side of the river and like one on the other side of the river. So you don't necessarily want them right next to each other, I guess, either is what I'm saying. You usually want them in different places. So, but I'll look and see what you've identified. There right. is one other, I think, or maybe I missed it. There was a, the request for the floor and classroom flooring upgrades. There is also, though, uh, a, a continuation of the restrooms. The restrooms mm -hmm. and the floors. floors. Yes. Yeah, we had, yeah, those are both we had mentioned that they both were both continuations. continuations. Right. So, yeah. okay, so both of those. So there's actually like four it's requests. Four, yeah. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. four. I just wanted to make sure. Absolutely. And we, we have. We have discussed the classroom flooring and the uh, bathrooms mm -hmm. previously, so we knew that and there, those would be pretty right. much a continuation of requests. Mm -hmm. And and I guess I have a question there, and I'm they didn't say exactly how many thousands of dollars they spent, but there's been a technology upgrade done in the elementary school that they used school choice money for. Um, and uh, I don't think it exceeded the threshold, but I'll find out uh, just so people can know. But they, uh, they got that, and they had a grant for some, well, as you know, they have the safety grant that's <coughs> allowing them to do some significant, I mean, to move along all the various security upgrades in terms mm -hmm. of cameras and locks mm -hmm. on the building. But those aren't in the plans because they're already taking place right. and the, the grant funded. The school, right, the school is taking care of those items. Mm -hmm. So you're not, there's not a need to come to the capital request, right, right for yes. capital requests on those. That's good to let the public know, though. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I asked them, they, they had just decided between themselves to proceed with the technology work, and I said, that's all well and good, but really the school choice funds need to be discussed in a school committee meeting going forward. <laughs> Yeah. And if we've got enough money involved, then we can bring it forward to this committee just to, to give, an, give an awareness. Okay, so um, next meeting is so next I, week. I just wanted to let you know if oh, you haven't. Oh, there's that meeting next week, which I'm not going to be able to come to. I can't right. make that either. Yeah. And Kevin, Kevin had planned on being here tonight. There was a car accident, and he. Um, had sent me a text. We couldn't make it. So we he was in a car. No, he's at a car. There's a car accident. It looks like on one on a, a five and ten somewhere. Um, and he's, is that another one in Mill Village, <coughs> like the one I got involved in? It I might got stuck in last night. Oh, I don't know. It was just tonight. Just yeah, minutes. there were three cars and just River looked, Road looked, looked a little messy. My daughter just got her license today. So. <laughs> was she, dri she, was she driving on River Road? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, know, I know where she is oh, right now. She's not on the road. Yeah, All you no. have to do is worry about the railroad crossing and, yeah, right. and the three bad intersections going down. No problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, he's something. Oh my gosh. Right next to the river. Yeah, it's a river on River Road. Oh, um, Jesus. And it was flooding and some issues. So. Okay, well, anyway. the 18th that we have the meeting next <clears throat> Wednesday with the three committees, the select board, I should say, the select board right. and two committees, the finance committee and the capital improvement committee. This is the 18th, what time? Five o'clock. They're looking to run that from five, I think, to 6.30 okay. with the three. So really, we're we're into January. Well, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, it looks like we're into January before our next opportunity. Why can't we do Thursday the 26th? Gain a week. 
Diana, do you know if uh, the select board is going to be requesting any of the department heads to be there for the Wednesday meeting? Next Wednesday? You don't think so? Are you talking about next Wednesday? Yeah, yes. this yeah, coming yes. Wednesday. Oh, yes, yes, I talked about that. Oh, yes. Um, so on the agenda already, we have the library um, director and, the ch and maybe the trustees. I don't know how many, if the chair or others. But um, they want to come in and talk about the library strategic plan that they mm -hmm. just completed and do an update on the MLBC construction grant and the building renovation expansion project. Um, and then we are going to talk about public works, all those things we just talked about tonight. We want to talk about the operations and equipment updates and, you know, kind of where we're going mm -hmm. and asking for all of these requests and what that's going to look like for um, supporting, you know, public works for the budget as well as capital. Um, and then we are going to talk about revenues a little bit and about economic development, give an update on those kinds of projects. And um, Zach's going to be there for skims although he doesn't have anything to present per se but he'll be available if you um, need him and kevin will be there so i expect some of the you know a lot of the department heads may be there i haven't put um, them on the agenda unless we have some you know major issue operational right. change or something my only thought was they're going to be out wednesday might night they might not want to be out thursday night too for another meeting the that next, week but we were talking the thursday, thursday after thursday? though Right. No, that would be that would be day after Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. Yeah, there's like a lot of people that take that take off that. Right. That are going to be taking off the, those I days. I won't be in town. <laughs> <laughs> On the 26th. <clears throat> so we could do the second of January, or I, my vote would be for the the next week of like the eighth of January or the ninth. Wow. Yeah, do the 7th, 8th, or 9th. Mm -hmm. I could do the 7th or the 9th of January. <laughs> You're going to be gone? No, I prefer the 8th, but I can, I can do them. I can do either of those. I can, the 7th would be the best for me, but as opposed to the other. It's, the 7th is work for you. It's a Tuesday. The 7th, I can, yes, I should be able to make the 7th. I, I, something's, niggling, something's niggling Could in the you, back you of make my it? mind about yeah. the seventh. Yeah. But can you do the seventh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Seventh. I'll plug it into the seventh. Make I a motion. We meet January seventh. Do we need Se a motion? I don't know. Second. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need a motion. Yeah, All in favor? We, need, we just need to <laughs> just direct seven. Jack to five o'clock. Yeah. The time. Five. Yeah. Five o'clock, January seventh. Okay. And who do we want to? Have here. Do we well, want to try to schedule? Try Kevin? To I think schedule we'll need Kevin. Kevin. I don't think we'll be able to talk too much on the 18th. Do you, about the right? Yeah, we probably won't. Do Do we want to try to schedule Kevin in the chief? John. Mm -hmm. That sounds yeah. good. Yep. Schedule yep. those two for the seventh at five o'clock, yeah. or you know, schedule one for five, the other for five thirty, or something like that. I think it better give us a little, a little more time than that. I think my personally, I, yeah, I think it's fast. Yeah, it does. Uh, well, Kevin, the highway probably take a little bit longer than the chief, so maybe. Would a two-hour meeting be okay with everybody? We could. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay. Do an hour for Kevin, an hour for the chief, depending. I don't I think, think Jeff's so. right. I don't think the chief will take that. I don't that, think that's the chief true. Kevin a, might take longer. I think maybe I think the, maybe the, the chief Kevin, we could have Kevin for like 45 minutes. and Do, do the chief at 5 o'clock? Because He'd be the, done in a half an hour and do Kevin yeah, at 5.30? Yeah, the highway would, yeah. requests are, you know, the, one is the, the mini excavator, excavator, which we talked about last year right. in detail. So it, and the other is just a truck. Yeah, but right? now it's just, just a truck. Now is good. Is that it? An alternative yeah. on the mini right. excavator so, yeah. for a more so, expensive one. Yeah, my questions are, whoa, what's the, I couldn't what's really parse out what the, the difference yeah. is, and it's yeah, a big, yeah. it's a lot of money for the better one. So, the or the I'll work out and speak to him. So why don't we have the chief at five, and we can say Kevin at five thirty, and then if he's yeah, and then if we, then if it goes on beyond, yeah. we can stay yeah, okay, another right. half hour or something. Diana, could you arrange that? Mm -hmm. Sure. And the chief at five o'clock and Kevin at five thirty yeah. for uh, Tuesday the seventh, January seventh. Yes. 
Um, so at that point, Jeff, I just want to be understanding. You're talking mostly at, about FY21's budget. Like this, you're reviewing the items that they just gave you, and right. because we've been doing, you know. Um, especially with public works, not with the police so much, but they probably do have a long-term capital plan as well. But with, they do. with the, pub, you know, certainly with um, uh, public works and even the scams, and, and we're trying to kind of gather all that information to get that onto a longer-term plan, you know, not, not something for 21's budget, but something to be looking at. So I'm hoping once you guys are you know, get through kind of your meetings about the budget, then you'll look at that sort of second component of your process, which is right. the well, planning think, well, right, portion. Because of, our, because of the deadline that we have, because, right. you know, we're, we're, we've got to technically have somewhat done. of a, right, yep, the budget done plus somewhat of a plan done by mid-February mid here because of the bylaws. So we're scrambling. I think with the committee here, we need to focus on the immediate request mm -hmm. get those settled right. and then we can expand on the plan as far as all the other things that you're you're yeah. discussing here uh and what's what's going to be involved with that is we're going to hopefully start a little dialogue on the 18th with the three committees or the board and two committees uh as far as all the things you're bringing forward because this plan there's so many unanswered questions as far as the select board where they want to go how they want to go with things how the town wants to proceed how you want to proceed and there there seems to be as from what I'm sensing here as we go along everybody keeps adding to the pot as far as this request and this request and this request and we have things that have been sitting now for years that we we haven't gotten any answers yet in in no direction is the sad part about it uh you know obviously they're doing an assessment on the buildings but we have several buildings here that you know let's face it they've been on the radar for how many years now and we still don't have any direction and for us to do that long-term plan that you're talking about and i agree it at some point needs to be done but there needs to be directions there needs to be decisions made so we can move forward with it and you know have it so it's a reasonable plan and how we're going to fund it so hopefully on the 18th some of that dialogue might be able to be started and then as we proceed hopefully we can make some groundwork here All right, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.